Morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Lovely to see you. Do sit down. Um, one or two notices as we begin. I published the bands of marriage and we created the marriage of Holly Louise Barlow and Warren Anthony Bennett, both of this parish, and to be married in the parish of St Mary Goldington. And this is for the first time I'm asking. If anybody knows any, just calls or any pediment, why these people should not lawfully be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. And then in parish news, you'll see um, some information about the harvest weekend. It's lovely that we've got the Bishop of St Albans, uh, who's coming to be with us uh, on that Sunday morning. Um, and you'll see information about the Bishop's harvest appeal uh, in parish news. And then there are envelopes um, in the foyer if you would like to, uh, to take that and, uh, and support uh, the Bishop's harvest appeal. It's uh, slightly lower key this year than perhaps some of the things we've done in previous years just because of everything that's going on. Um, but uh, do look in Parish News if you want some, some further <coughs> details and then there are links on the email that went out about uh, further information about, uh, about the, the Bishop's Harvest Appeal. Uh, but uh, as always, do uh, fill in the sign-up sheets if you'd like to come along to one of those uh, services uh, at harvest and then on Wednesday we will have um, our normal uh, morning zoom uh, service uh, morning prayer followed by the APCM uh, and then uh, that will be followed uh, by a PCC a church council meeting um, so you probably need to get a, a, a larger cup of coffee on the morning before the uh, uh, before the, um, the Zoom service, you may even want to bring some biscuits and sandwiches to see you through the morning. But it'd be really good if you could uh, you could join us for that. Uh, and again, details of the uh, of the Zoom service and the uh, the council meeting and the APC every parish news. So as we start our service, let's just have a moment of. sentence of scripture from Philippians chapter 3. I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let's confess our sins in penitence and fear, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through, through weakness, through our, our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before our Bible readings, we have the college prayer for today and for the week ahead. Gracious God, 
you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading from Exodus chapter 20. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath all that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work. Honour your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour, you shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 to 14. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. In regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic, legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Jesus Christ took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son, but when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom, the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realised that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, it's lovely to be preaching, you can take your mask off. <laughs> <laughs> Some years ago, uh, Colin and I bought a house in, in Bedford. Uh, we thought we could afford to do so if we managed to rent it out. Um, it became difficult when interest rates hit 15%, but we got over that, we coped. Uh, first of all, we rented it to Chick Sands. Remember Chick Sands? Yeah. And, um, and that was great, really, because the only problem was if the soldiers didn't pay or if they were noisy or anything. They just used to ring up the base, they'd send a truckload of troops around and they'd, <coughs> they'd sort them out. So there was never any problem with the tenants. Um, but of course, Chick Sands closed down and uh, that was a disaster. Uh, and we, but then we rented it to the, to the university, the college at the time. And, uh, and we had some lovely students who came and and stayed with us. But there was one time when there was two girls in the chap there, and the girls rang up and said they were having problems. So I went down to the house, and the first thing I noticed was there was a Tesco trolley in the kitchen. He brought a Tesco trolley home, but the kitchen, the kitchen wasn't big enough for a Tesco trolley. Somehow he managed to get the kitchen uh, filled up with his Tesco trolley, and they told me about the things he was doing. He wasn't paying up his rent properly, and so, so I, I, I cut all his stuff and put it in the garage and locked the door so he couldn't get in. And uh, I didn't, at least I didn't send um, any, any troops around to sort him out. But uh, he, was, he was evicted, so he had a bad tenant, gone. And, uh, and in the story today, we've got the same sort of situation where somebody had a tenant and they weren't behaving themselves. Now it's quite interesting because when I, I was told when we rented out our house, that someone said to me, look, it's, it, it's like, it does treat like a business. Because you're not living there. Don't treat it your own house. So don't put nice carpets down. What's mean you can wash? That kind of thing. Um, and it's very interesting because I was reading this story about the, the chap who owned the vineyard and, and who was going to rent it out. And it's quite interesting. So if you look at it, he, he treated it very well. He gave them a lovely vineyard. He, he put a wine press in the vineyard. He could have just put an old fence around it and left it, left it to it. But he, he put a, 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 a watchtower in. And he put a, a wine press in. So he really gave the tenants the world. Looked after it. Was a, it, was a, it was a great vineyard. 
and he read it out to them and the tenants treated it really really badly wouldn't pay up and so he sent the servants round the servants were stoned killed or beaten and he sent more servants round treated the same so he went you know went the extra mile to try and give the tenants a chance to pay up and eventually of course we hear that the landowner sent his own son round and the tenants killed the son now at the time of Jesus the Roman Empire had lots of these estates where landlords would rent them out and you can understand that uh, if you didn't collect the rent then the tenants could sometimes take ownership of the land of course I suppose when they saw the son coming they thought perhaps the owner was dead and if they killed the, the son then they would be able to inherit the vineyard so they were really devious and nasty tenants and there's a meaning to the parable which is very clear to us and is made clear in the reading the owner of the vineyard is God and, and when Jesus spoke of the vineyard everybody would know that he was thinking of Israel the chosen nation and God had looked after you know in the same way as the landowner made a lovely watchtower and wine press and all that kind of stuff God had given them something wonderful but those tenants if you like uh, had beaten and killed the ones that God had sent. Men like Jeremiah, the prophets, Uriah who was killed, the prophets that God sent to the nation to tell them how to behave and, and what God wanted. They were treated very, very badly. And even, Jesus says, when the son comes, who was himself, he would be killed. You've got to try and put yourself back into that time. And remember that when Jesus spoke these words, He'd be speaking in Jerusalem, the place where King Herod in 20 BC had started to build this fantastic temple as a testimony to the faith. And it wouldn't be finished until AD 63, <coughs> all that time building this magnificent temple. And when Matthew's Gospel was written and the people read these words of Jesus, that would be after AD 70, when that magnificent temple was raised to the ground. The Romans went in and destroyed it, destroyed it completely. So these words of Jesus are quite prophetic when we read them. Jesus was making a judgment in the parable today, a judgment that those who had led the Jewish nation had failed. And as a consequence, God was going to work in a new way. Instead of a temple, which represented all the glories of that faith, God was making a new temple. And that temple would be Jesus himself, a new religion. God was making something new and Jesus would be the cornerstone of that, the cornerstone of a new kingdom, a new way of living, a, a, a kingdom that was comprised not just of the Jewish people, but of all people be for every nation called into the kingdom of God. So it's a good news story. It's a good news story for all who are called. Uh, Jesus says, therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and it will be given to a people. But it's not just any old people. It's a people who will produce, Jesus says, fruit. Because you haven't produced fruit, it's going to be taken away from you, it will be destroyed. It'll be given to a new people, but these people will bear fruit. So the new kingdom is good news, but it's also got great expectations. And in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus uses these, this word fruit many times. The Jewish leaders have not produced fruit. They had uh, treated what God had given them as though it, God didn't exist and refused to live up to expectations, running for themselves. So the citizens of the new kingdom must be different. They must produce fruit, be worthy tenants. No Tesco trolleys in the kitchen. Behaved tenants, good tenants. <coughs> so what was the fruit which Jesus spoke about in Matthew? Because that's important for us today. 
because the sermon isn't just about the history of what happened and how Jesus brought in this new kingdom. It's also about what it means for us as citizens of the new kingdom. And Jesus says the same thing twice in Matthew 7, by their fruit you will recognise them, by their fruit. He says it twice in Matthew 7, by their fruit you will recognise them. So we just need to think what that fruit is. John the Baptist, when he called people to repentance before Jesus came, talked about fruit and he talked about the fruit that people needed to provide. It's quite straightforward, quite simple, nothing mystical about it. He says, if you have two shirts, give one of your shirts away to somebody who has no shirt. So it's about generosity towards people. That's what, that's a fruit. He said to tax collectors, don't cheat people. So it's about honesty. That's a fruit. He said to soldiers, do not exhort money. Be content with what you have. That's a fruit. And Jesus spoke a lot about wolves in sheep's clothing. People who looked religious, but their deeds didn't live up to their words. In other words, they're not bearing fruit. And so you just look at the life of Jesus and he shows us the model of what lives bearing fruit look like. I just made a, a, you know, a very short list, but... I picked out some of the examples. Caring for those people who are on the margins. Like that woman who was uh, bleeding and therefore she would have been um, disowned by people who knew. They wouldn't let her into their homes because she was unclean. Wouldn't let her come to church. All that kind of stuff. People wouldn't go near her. Jesus noticed her and drew her close. Uh, I love the way Jesus didn't give a hoot about... Um, religious traditions, just doing them because they'd always been done that way. So he, he had no regard for the food laws that everyone abided by or, um, or breaking the law on the Sabbath, his disciples were accused of doing that. Looking after sick and, and blind people, and you lose count of the number of people that Jesus cared for who were sick and poorly. Showing compassion for those people who were bereaved. Even when, like Martha, they, they blamed him for the death that had been caused. If you'd been here, my brother would not have died, Martha said. Do you remember that? Noticing people who were left out and lonely people, like Zacchaeus, who was really unpopular. Being prepared to give folks another chance. And I think of that with the woman who was caught in adultery. Not being judgmental of others. Jesus said, think about the log in your own eye before we start picking out the speck in somebody else's. Making sure that you're not prejudiced against people just because of their race. And Jesus meant, showed that very clearly when he taught the parable about the Good Samaritan. Everybody hated the Samaritans because they were a horrible race. And of course, sexism. Jesus was really strong in showing an example of how uh, he taught women and brought women into an educational environment that they'd never had before. And it's very difficult to imagine that 2,000 years later, we're still having to deal with things like uh, prejudice against people because of race or because of gender. These are things which Jesus wanted as fruit, as proof of being a member of the new kingdom. Our junior church sheet, which Janine's been preparing for for some weeks now, summarises the rules by which the Christian should live. Uh, takes the, the Ten Commandments and summarises them. And it, it, he, she uses the words which Jesus spoke when he was talking about God's commandments. And he summarised them all by this. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And we demonstrate that not with words but with the fruit of our lives, as we love our neighbour as ourselves. Amen. <laughs> Probably nice if I come. Right. So continue for the prayers. Oh. Take the mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.
well, it's me leading the prayer, so I'll take my mask back off again. <laughs> let, us, uh, let us pray. And we'll begin our prayers this morning with the, um, with the prayer of, of offering, as we thank God for what has been given to us and give back in God's service. Should we say to that? Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and on your own do we give you. So as we give thanks to God for the gifts bestowed upon us, we offer back to God as we come in our prayers today. And the bidding for our prayers is, Lord, in your mercy, and the response is here. Father, keep us under the shadow of your mercy in these often dark and uncertain times when many are in distress and despair as the world struggles to deal with coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Support and sustain the anxious and the fearful. Lift up all who are brought low. Give strength and hope to all those affected by the virus through illness, isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief, strength and recovery in you. And may we all rejoice in the comfort, knowing that by trusting in you, nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time, shaping national and local policies, that they may make wise decisions in the interests of all that they serve. We pray for doctors, nurses, technicians and medical researchers, that through their skill, dedication and insights, many will be restored to health. For our local community, that our neighbourhood may be a place of trust and friendship, where all are known, valued and cared for. And for our homes, our families and our schools, and our universities, that all may be places of nurture, safety, comfort and love. And we pray for our local churches, that you would be with all of the communities of faith who worship here in Bedford. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, grant us the wisdom to be wise stewards of the earth, caring for its resources. Help us to act now in caring, so that future generations may see that we have looked after what has been entrusted to us to be passed on to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the sick, the isolated and the housebound, that we may all be alert to their needs and may be ready to provide care and support to them in their vulnerability. Remember those who mourn, that in their sorrow they may draw strength and comfort from your life and your victory over death. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. We remember before God all who have died, and we light a candle to symbolise the light of Christ, which eternally shines and brings hope. You turn our darkness into light, in your light shall we see light. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And we share and say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. That it is right to give our thanks and praise. praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom we have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, 
Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts are bread and wine, may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. During the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you and his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God our Father, whose Son, the light unfailing, has come from heaven to deliver the world from the darkness of ignorance. Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life, and walk in it without stumbling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.